Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls. As you can see behind me, woodwork. It's been a massive couple of weeks doing all of our internal robe frames, inserts and doors. We've been working on foam core doors with a wood laminate on them and they're coming up a treat. We're so happy with them. Janet's been staining them and I have my brother and my brother-in-law Jimmy down here this weekend helping me with the sanding and the detailing of these and they have come up absolutely beautiful. This week... We're actually going to laminate the bow extensions. You've all been looking at that foam for some time. Uh, I'm going to basically knock that over in a three day period that near killed me. There was a lot of laying on my back in resin and Janet worked so bloody hard. I mean, I'm so proud of her. But anyway, let's get into it. Well, uh, so we're just working out the laminate schedule for as windy as today. Laminate schedule for <laughs> our bows, and we've worked out we need three layers of double bias all coming down. And the first one stopping there, 50 mil high, 50 mil high. So we're overlapping and tabbing the thing on, and then we're going to come to here. So we're basically wrapping it around so that we'll end up with six layers on the physical hull. Now, remembering that the hull is already. Um, it already has its own integrity. This is purely a sacrificial one, so it doesn't need to have too heavy a layer. We just need to make sure that we cover it so we get our anti-foul and our epoxy barrier coat on there. And because it's solid core foam, there's absolutely no chance of any void or any water getting into it. It simply can't be penetrated. There are no voids in this. I am going to get a drill and just drill a heap of perforations in it all over just to allow for um, the resin to soak into it um, as we spray the resin and I'm going to go and give my gun a clean out and we'll get started on that probably one day next week I think. Yeah, when, yep. I, when it's not windy because Russ gets a bit agitated with yeah, this, this wind. Yeah, this tent just shits See? me. Just See how it goes. It's just about ruined from the wind and we've had some serious wind. So I guess I mean, 100k an hour last night. See? Oh, it erodes me. <laughs> it erodes me. Okay, so... 600 double bars. You got it? Yep. I think we're good. We've got our distances. That's cool. Okay. setup has concluded for tomorrow and what we're going to do is we are going to spray up these babies this is going to be a massive morning we've got uh, three layers on each of these and then some fairing and then potentially another couple of layers depending on how we want to go but uh, to laminate these it's not going to be that easy so I've chosen to bring my spray machine down here so that we can sort of control the resin content and Hopefully, I'm going to spray someone first and let it tack off for about half an hour. Uh, I'm just watching the wind. I don't want any wind down here because I don't want any of this dust getting into the laminates. But at the moment, I think we're looking pretty good. It's going to be a bit of a damp day by the look of it. All right, it's lamination of the bow day, and uh, I've got it all organised up in here. We've got rid of all of our excess stuff up in here. We've got our cloth cut Janet's cut all of that and prepared all of that here with her protective coating but one thing I've just done I came in this morning and I've perforated the foam because it's flat sheet and not good score it doesn't have the ability to be able to absorb resin so what I've done is I've put in thousands of small holes every 45 millimeters or so with a drill only went in about a centimeter or two and deeper some of the areas are a little bit deeper what I intend to do is fill those with resin as I spray the vinyl ester on here and basically let those form small rivets that will actually help to hold the glass in place now I don't expect to ever have delamination of this boat unlike some of the boats we're seeing on YouTube where the whole hulls are delaminating the gel coat skin hasn't been bonded properly due to a failed infusion now that is something we're seeing a lot of voids under infusions where there's been a leak in the bag that sort of stuff is just not tolerated 
by me and uh, certainly very, very disappointing for anyone that owns a new boat that does that. That means there's been a failed lamination and they've just continued on and we don't like that sort of thing. All these perforations will actually help to hold the laminations to the hull and, uh, and basically get these layers on. Now we're going to put a layer of CSM on just like a tie layer to the foam and then two layers of 600 double bias and then we'll see how it goes. There's going to be some fairing involved. Uh, this is going to be a big job, Jen. Yeah, I know. Looking forward to it? I always get butterflies when it's a big job like this. <laughs> <laughs> Take it in our stride, honey. You looking forward to this bit, Dylan? Uh, yeah, I just realised I had a grey root. <laughs> you, look, you had like a badger stripe down your head. I thought, sure Janet hasn't gone that grey from this project. <laughs> Should have gone. Yeah, but probably yeah, has, but uh, yeah, walked across something that had powder on it. That, <laughs> it's like I missed the T stripe down the middle of your head. <laughs> All right, ready for spray up, and we're basically masked up. Jan's just working on the other side over there and uh, we're ready to basically spray up here. Alright, oh, no. so we're almost ready here. We're just masking up the final side here. It's a little bit complicated around here because we've got the tent against us, but I'm going to get rid of this um, ratchet strap I've got here, which actually holds the tent down in high winds. So I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, always get a little nervous sting in the belly after setting up for something like this this is going to be a massive spray up but uh, it's got to be done nonetheless both sides ready probably only do the outsides in this session or maybe only one side we'll see how we go eh? check out okay. janet how neat she is yeah, I mean. and it keeps piling stuff on my workstation hang, hang on i set that up <laughs> i set that up i, I think it. that's i could it all Janet's laying claim to everything I these days. It does not. it's I everything. No, that is such rubbish. <laughs> I'm just the enigma. And the private moment she put out on the video, like when I gave her the finger, that shouldn't have gone on the video. Don't I get the finger five times a day? No, you do not. It's rare. You do not. It's not fair. Janet really is the gentlest person I've ever met. <laughs> but when it comes to me. <laughs> Ooh, there's um yeah I put up with a lot <laughs> I put up with a lot <laughs> yeah right not one of you believe that and don't believe it because it is oh. not true now this is sat here for about two months and uh, look at the dirt that's on it so it's so important to clean your foam you don't want to have dust in the substrate at all so we give the foam a quick wipe only with acetone though you want it to flash off very quickly you don't want to wet the foam because we want the resin to be able to absorb into what little closed cell there is and yeah i mean all we seem to be doing is moving dirt from one place to another that's why i'm sort of hanging to get this laminated so i can start to work on the finish Yeah. yeah, and just see if we can roll most of it into those holes because we're trying to fill those holes. Get on, just here, sorry. Alright, so we'll put that on and let that tack off for five minutes and then we'll start laminating. Well, it has been a long time since you guys have had to endure a good laminating session with me. This one was one for the ages. I spent a lot of time laying on my back and you'll notice while watching this time lapse that by spending the time on my back on the ground, I got covered in resin, covered in dirt. The tarp was there to basically stop any dust from flying up under the laminate, but not a bad effort for an old fella, eh? Oh, yeah, I have it here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Using gravity. <laughs> so we've wet out underneath and we're, rather than saturate the cloth and end up with parasitic resin, we're basically hanging it and then putting on just enough resin. You don't need to over wet this stuff out. I mean, I see so much over wetting going on and it's just not yes, ideal because then it all ends up in a heap on the floor. We're trying to keep it on and keep the whole surface tacky as we go. And by doing that, you're letting gravity do the work, but you're also getting a good bond. So look at that, that's actually in place and that is just no trouble at all and it's staying on because of the tack that we got. So that's taken 10 minutes to do that whole 10 feet of laminate. Thank God, there's only one side, we've still got to do that. I know, I know, but one... But that is perfect, it's spot on. We haven't had any issues, other than... You keep jinxing those, you make me nervous. Eh? Hey? You keep jinxing those, you make me nervous. <laughs> Alright, let's go. We kicked off laminating the port side bow at 10.15 this morning. It's now 10 to 4. Uh, and we've only just finished, so that's three solid layers and peel ply and that was a, a mission but it is done and as i said to janet you're never gonna have to do that ever again so this is looking very very good and i mean it couldn't be done any better and in fact we had no um drapage of the cloth i was worried it might have draped a bit but and i'm pretty much convinced that my method is the best method basically spray resin on the substrate first on the foam and i filled all of those little perforations that i put in there let it tack off for about 10 or 15 minutes because it's vinyl ester it's going off super fast it's not like epoxy where you've got to wait an hour or two before you start to get a kick or even six seven hours depending on the temperature we had 25 degrees here today so it's perfect temperature for vinyl ester um, as that starts to flash off and starts to get tacky you whack your first layer on and that first layer is put on dry because you've already got a wet substrate underneath you've started to dampen the back of it and then because it's only 600 double bias you're easily able to wet it as it's put on dry you're using a dry brush to smooth it on and by smoothing it on you're getting a guaranteed air bubble free substrate the second layer then is able to be laid and what we did we actually cupped underneath and then we cut back underneath again we cut back underneath and then we come back underneath and we've come right through it all about here so the actual hull line is actually six layers of 600 double bias and uh, the bulb well it's an icebreaker I reckon that's 10 layers of 600 double bias right on the very bow and it's a bit messy under there but nothing a bit of sanding won't fix and, uh, and that is done now. So all we need to do really with that now is to barrier coat it and anti-foul it. I mean, it's done. So that has been an absolute win, but um, I hate to tell you, tomorrow we're doing that one. And uh, that's Saturday morning and Janet just looked at me just to say, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I said, yes, you are. There's no choice in this matter. You want this boat as much as I do, we're doing that tomorrow. But we'll take our time and we might even start a little bit earlier because it's going to be a pretty wet day, so I want to try and crack it on before it rains. Yesterday we laid up the new hull modifications on our port side and felt like about an hour had passed, although I was wrecked. But Janet made a funny comment as we left. I can't remember what it was. 
the, kind of, the chemicals have got to my head. And um, and Janet was here with me pretty much all the day working away. And what was what did you actually make the comment when you left here? I said it was like a time warp when you walk into the tent. It feels like an hour and you walk out and you've done six. But anyway. So my reply to that was, how do you think I feel? I've been here for six years. Oh. <laughs> and I have been in the in the biodome here, as hey, you can Russ. see, for Russ. over six years. Oh, did you see that? He's always looking for sympathy. Well, it's better than when I get the finger from Janet. <laughs> Once, twice, and she flashes me the bird and I know I'm in trouble. <laughs> what, twice in the whole time I've been building with you. That's actually not too bad. You're actually doing pretty yeah. well. <laughs> all right, so these guys are done and uh, we're all set up to do the starboard side. And uh, yeah, we just want to get this done. It's around about half past nine in the morning, so I expect it to finish around about 2 to 2.30, depending on how fast we go. It is a bit of an effort to get this on, but certainly worthwhile. That is done forever. I never have to do it again. Oh, we had an unbelievably successful day yesterday. Over the last two days have fully laminated our bows. And that, what I thought was a couple of hours actually, was about six hours on the port side and the starboard side over here was, you know, I think we knocked it over about four and a half after all the prep. The prep was absolutely epic. And I'll just show you over here, I've just removed all the peel ply and it's now fully fully integrated into the hull itself I, what i did is i actually did the first layer we ended here second layer we ended here and the last one here so we went 50 millimeters and then we also have as you can see here, there's a very faint line along the bottom here uh, we've overlapped it six times so there's absolutely no voids inside this particular structure it is a fully sacrificial bulb that can be torn off damaged punched holes in whatever and they've still got about six or eight inches before we even get to the hull so not only is this i think probably one of the best things i'll ever do for the buoyancy of the boat which was required uh, it also is an incredible safety feature for our vessel now i've mentioned this many times before it's interesting where you get your inspiration from the design we came up with here was a solution that was added to the previous version of this particular design of catamaran upon researching the solution we came across a lot of different versions of catamarans with similar buoyant pods, bulbs, and extension bows, including the record-breaking Lock Crowther design top gun. And I'm confident that we've made the right choice. A reverse bow design would have required a one meter extension and would have taken our boat well over the 13 meter mark. The magic number for excessive expense in marinas and insurance premiums going forward, not to mention the fact that it would have been a big effort to do and I didn't really have the room in the space that I had to be able to facilitate that extension. Safety for a lot of sailors is being able to attain as much speed as possible. For me, I just don't want this thing pitch poling and, uh, and nose diving. And I do know for a fact that the original boat had a buoyancy issue and they did exactly what I've done here to solve that problem. And if we go back to the Lock Crowther boat, and there's a number of other ones that had bulbs, tulip bulbs and the like. It certainly solves the problem. It may detract a little from my speed, but it certainly will or hopefully make it for a much more comfortable ride. And once we rig the boat and we whack a rig, 300 kilos of chain, anchor, uh, rig and, and everything else. And then we push the center of effort with the mast and the sail we could very end up with a, a nose diving boat. So this is gonna solve that problem. Now the worst case scenario is if it's too much buoyancy, I'll just shave some off. If it's too little, I can add some. And that is how I've sort of addressed this, um, this issue. I can shave off buoyancy off the side until ultimately in six years time, I get it right and probably sell the boat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's basically been a real win. Now remembering this is vinyl ester, it is not polyester, we've done this in vinyl ester which is a modified epoxy and, uh, and not prone to osmosis even though I don't care if it gets osmosis in there because ultimately it's only a bulb anyway so it's not going to affect the integrity of the hull regardless but this peel ply was put on, this was put on yesterday so we now and in fact when I look at it that's almost fair, the joint 
the lamination is almost fair. It's not going to take much to get that fair. And, you know, pretty much water line is here. So this is all below the water. Let's peel the peel ply off and reveal Janet and my laminating uh, effort of yesterday, which was uh, substantial effort. But uh, I am totally, totally delighted in our efforts here. This is fully, fully set up. Probably not fully cured. It takes about three days for this to cure. And that is now one very, very solid structure. Mm -hmm.